I'm Tiger Height, and I'm here to make WWE, NXT, and Pro Wrestling Majestic again. It was a pleasurable NXT. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. It was just there. Our first match was the Angelo family taking on the Dyad, but for some reason throughout the commentary, they almost implied that this was for the NXT Tag Team Champions. Can somebody clarify that for me? I'm not going to rewatch it. The match was fun. I actually kind of like the interferences and the little bit of a hint that it could possibly be the Creed family or the Creed brothers, excuse me. There was a lot here I liked. It was fun, interesting, and different. They're still forwarding a rivalry where the other people aren't even there. And sometimes that can be great and sometimes that could suck. And it doesn't suck here. It was the lifting side slam for the D'Angelo family to win. It still was interference. I'll give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. Our next match was Blair Davenport taking on Dana Brooke. My God, this match was a mess. Just a mess. Jesus Christ. It was a knee to the face after another knee to the face from for Blair to win. Thank God she won because this was... If it went any longer, somebody was going to botch really bad where somebody was going to get hurt. There were multiple missed spots, multiple weird, like, awkward endings. It just, ugh. Mess, thumbs down. We have Drew Gulak taking on Trick Williams. It was fine. There's not really a whole lot to say here. It just kind of felt like a waste of time. A uh, spinning kick thing for Trick Williams to win. I'll be nice, Orange Cassidy thumbs up. Up next was something that I was actually digging. We have uh, Baron Corbin and Von Wagner having interaction, and they brawled. There was a little bit of a table spot, but it never went through. They're going to have a match next week. I can dig it. Orange Cassidy thumbs up. I still cannot believe after all of this time they got Va Von Wagner over. Like, seriously, I cannot believe it. I thought Von Wagner was a lost cause, but this is like a proof that WWE, in some way, shape, or form, knows how to capitalize on something that actually got over. This whole table, it's literally a powerbomb through the table, and somehow it got over. And not just in within NXT, like through the audience on social media. They want to see the table spot with Von. It's crazy. Up next was Wesley taking on Dijak. The winner is going to face Carmelo Hayes for the NXT champion at Heatwave. This is essentially in the middle of the show, and this is for their main champion. Why was it here? Well, in hindsight, I know why, but did we really need that part? No, we didn't. I kind of wish this closed off the show overall, but the match was fine. These two had a classic for the North American champion. And this match did not meet that expectation. In fact, it was kind of lame. Dijak continues. <sighs> I, I want to say he doesn't look bad as a contender for the NXT champion, but his value within anybody else's mind is starting to diminish, and I can see why. It was a spiral tap for the win. All I can give this is an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. I'm sorry. I mean, these two had a two thumbs up, and it's still match of the year contender. This was not that. So up next was Tyler Bate and Joe Coffey, and you would think that these two good wrestlers would have a good wrestling match with a conclusive finish. No. Daba Kato ran in, attacked both of them before any momentum happened. I hate saying this because I really do. This was a match. It gets an Orange Cassidy thumbs down. It would have been less if these two did not have some sort of momentum being picked up, and I was kind of digging it. Why Dabakato? Why attack both of them? Why Dabakato? Why Dabakato? I don't know. For reasons. Man, these, this company is still fucking, bless her goddamn heart, trying with JC Jane. I mean, Gigi Dolan wasn't even all that good either. Jesus Christ, rocking a hard place. Mandy Rose was the glue holding that fucking group together, wasn't she? These two tried. It was a inside cradle after Andre Chase tried to get a top turnbuckle back together. Distracting everybody, which was odd because he was trying to do the right thing. 
And then Saya had a pity party because she's fucking 19 goddamn years old and stormed out like a 19-year-old. And that's how JC Jane has to win at this point, once again. Why? And where? Where do you go from here? Is JC Jane the next contender? Why is she winning matches? Why is Saya doing this? What's happening here? Thumbs down. So the final segment was an impromptu contract signing for Heatwave, where Carmelo Hayes was signing autographs for random people that weren't even there. And Wesley grabs the contract, rips down the table that Carmelo was signing at, and dragging the table and the contract out to the ring. I actually did like this when hindsight is 2020. It was more so of a contract signing out of frustration and I'm ready for it rather than Carmelo, you know, ducking Wes all this time because he wasn't. Basically, Carmelo wanted Wes to take the ball by the horns and say, go out there and force me to do this. And he did. I don't hate it. I thought this was good. Very interesting character work for Wesley, but man, sometimes he needs a mouthpiece. Carmelo's awesome. I like this overall. I'm excited to see what happens to Heat Wave, but I feel like they could have probably dragged this on a little bit more, and I would have probably been just as happy, if not more so. Eh, you know what? Short term, it's fine. Long term, it could have been better, but at the same time, Thank God it's sooner rather than later because Wesley is not like the greatest of promos. He's getting there, but he's not quite there yet. We'll give him some time. I like this overall still. Very short, sweet, and simple. I thought these two had a decent interaction. I'll give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. Like I said, it was a fine show. Not the strongest of NXTs that I've ever seen in the world, but it was perfectly acceptable. I like the fact that they showcase a lot more NXT guys than it being the Dominic Mysterio show, but it is what it is. Let me know what you think in the comments down below or right next to me over here. Become a patron, obviously, and get some hats. There will be links for both in the bio along with all the social medias. And also follow or subscribe either right next to me over here or in the description down below. And all as always, be majestic.